Hey guys, you may have recently seen that one of the leopard gecko additions to this family is Viserion the Lemon Frost, and he is absolutely beautiful and so well behaved and I love him to death. But I get a lot of questions about him because he is a Lemon Frost, and that's a relatively new morph to the leopard gecko morph collection, so to speak. And another reason I get a lot of questions is because Lemon Frosts are known to produce cancerous tumors. If you're not familiar with Viserion and you want to start off by meeting him, then I'm going to leave a little card up here that you can click and I'm also going to leave it at the end of the video so if you want to stop here and watch that now go ahead up there and if you want to wait to the end of the video and then watch his welcome home video which explains a bit about him where I got him from what he looks like and all that then that'll be at the end of the video and in the links below before we get started I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell also don't mind this band-aid I cut myself on a shopping cart so that's why that's there. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. I have done my research, even though I've been familiar with Lemon Frost since they came out because I've been keeping leopard geckos that long, but I always want to put out the most informative videos, hi Jackson, that I possibly can because I don't want to mislead or misguide anyone or put out improper information. If you see my arm moving, this isn't petting my dog, he will not chill, so I want to film this video, but he's here <laughs> off to the side. Anyways, the lemon frost morph is actually a mutation that came from a normal, normal pairing. So you had a normal morph leopard gecko paired to a normal morph leopard gecko. And this happened at the gourmet rat, I believe it was, which is a breeder I'm not familiar with. And one of their staff noticed that this gecko did not look like a normal hatchling. And so they separated it. And then as it grew up, they realized that it was a new morph, a mutation different from just a normal. This happened happened in 2013, so like I said, it is definitely relatively new to the leopard gecko scope of morphs. So that one offspring was bred and it had lemon frost offspring, and those offspring were sold at auction. The auction took place in Tinley Park at NARBC, which is actually a convention that I've been to, and I'll get to my experience with lemon frost later, but I actually was there for a second auction of a lemon frost. I believe the first pair, it was a male and female, one was older than the other, uh, went for $10,000. $10,000 at NERBC Tinley Park, which is just wild to me, but there is definitely money in new morphs and in breeding, uh, even for leopard geckos. That pair was purchased by Steve at Geckos Accept, and then that pairing was bred to other geckos. So the male was ready to breed, and that male was bred to other morphs, and then the following year, since the female was ready to breed, that female was bred to that male, so to make a super lemon frost and then that female was also bred to other types of gecko morphs. So we know a few things about the genetics and that would be that the gene is dominant. Now I'm gonna get into some very 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 minuscule biology just for the purpose of understanding. So you have heterozygous, homozygous, those are going to be your two that will have a dominant trait in them. Your homozygous will have two of uh, the dominant traits, so say we'll use the letter A for example, it will be double A, and then if you have your heterozygous dominant, that would be a capital A and a lowercase a. Geckos that are born with two A's would be a super lemon frost, so this will occur when you breed two lemon frosts together. And then when you have a lemon frost bred to another gecko that also produces a lemon frost, it will be a big A and a little A, so to speak. Again, very minuscule biology we're going into here, just for the purpose of understanding the traits. Once those geckos were bred and their offspring started, you know, hatching out, they were selling for thousands and thousands of dollars still because they were very new as of 2016, 2017, and still this year, but we'll get to that. Sorry if it looks different, my dog just knocked the camera over. Anyways, I was at NERBC Tinley Park in 2016, October 2016, and that's where I saw some of the first offspring go for auction there, and I know one gecko went for, I think it was $2,500, and I know that many of other geckos produced that people bought that are lemon frost, they were spending well over a thousand dollars on those geckos, if not more. At that point, lemon frosts were being crossed to all kinds of morphs just to see, you know, how the babies would look. That's the point of breeding, is to see what type of results the offspring will have. Now, the thing that's so great about lemon frosts is their appearance. They came from a normal, normal pairing, and basically what you get is really enhanced colors. They have this really um, bright yellow base that's kind of like, 
it's bright but it's not like saturated so it's a really neat color and then you also have a lot more white on the base and the coolest thing about lemon frost is probably their eyes which are super super white or like really uh, light blue and they have like really neat like almost electric lines going through them they look incredible so of course that's another reason why everyone was so driven to have one and breed them however in 2017 which is last year now right, right now it's 2018 so for anyone watching this in the future in 2017 about a year ago everyone started noticing that their geckos were developing tumors now these tumors are being developed on their face and neck region and one person in particular shared on a genetics Facebook page that he had had some of his lemon frost develop these tumors and that he had contacted other people and their lemon frost were developing tumors as well. The animals with tumors were humanely euthanized and then they were necropsied. So basically they had a autopsy. So the purpose of the necropsies was to determine the cause of the tumors and also to determine whether or not they were malignant or benign and also in general just to get a better understanding of what was actually going on inside and what they found is that there were not just tumors in the skin there were also tumors in the organs in particular there were tumors found surrounding the trachea but also found in some organs including the lungs the kidneys the liver now the frequency of the tumors is what was so concerning because they didn't know if it was malignant which means that it was cancerous and multiplying so one tumor turned into many or if it was the development of several separate tumors both of which are problematic of course but you have to understand which one's which unfortunately it came back that the tumors are malignant which means that they are cancerous and that they will spread now the cause of the tumors actually comes from the pigment that you see in a lemon frost so on the underside of a lemon frost they have this creamy white kind of like cloudy coloring and that pigment which makes a lemon frost is what also causes the tumors. The actual cause is the, and I'm gonna probably mess this up, iridophore pigment. I'm not sure if it's iridophore or iridophore, but I know that they are iridophomas, which means that it's the pigment that is causing the tumor or that the tumor is developing in the pigment. After the euthanization and necropsies and analyses performed on a handful of geckos, some people thought that this was too small of a sample and continued to breed lemon frost anyway, hoping that they could find a way around the tumors or tumor-free lines of lemon frosts. And still to this day, there has not been a proven line of tumor-free lemon frost gecko. The reason this is, is because while a baby may be born without the tumors, the possibility for tumors is there. And in fact, they take up to or over a year to develop. So it would take a long time to try and test out a line because you have to keep those geckos back and make sure that they don't ever develop tumors. So essentially, it's too new to the market for enough time to have passed to declare any of the lines tumor free something else I don't see many people talk about and sorry for the shadows it's just I ran out of time to film today so we're getting shadows something else that I don't see enough people talk about is the super lemon frost now I have only seen photos of these animals I've never actually seen any in person and I've never seen anyone selling them but I know that geckos except produces them and back when the tumor occurrences were happening they were starting to show pictures of lemon frosts that were super lemon frosts on their page some of these animals looked weird. Their eyelids were puffy and their eyes looked small or stunted. And some of their bodies were shorter. Some of their faces were stunted. So I think that another ethical question that comes into play aside from just, you know, the tumors is the combination of a lemon frost and a lemon frost to create a super lemon frost, which, as I said earlier in my very mini biology lesson, would be the homozygous two capital letters. Uh, this was my A, two capital A's. That's really lame. I'm sorry I did that. So the question that I have to pose is, why are lemon frosts still being bred? There are numerous answers to this question and each will be different for a breeder. So a breeder may think that they are breeding lemon frost because they want to find a tumor free line. Others may breed lemon frost because they simply like the appearance of the lemon frost and want to see what other type of morphs they can create or other type of certain looks that they can create in a gecko. And other people may breed them for the money because they are still selling for hundreds if not thousands of dollars. I think an issue that not enough people are raising, and I think that there are plenty of people who are, but I feel like not enough, is at what cost 
is it to find a pure line. The cost is numerous geckos with cancer, numerous geckos with tumors, and not just in or around their skin and neck, but also inside of their organs and their internal structures. What is the purpose? The purpose is just for a, a appealing gecko, for money, or for trying to find a pure line. The only thing I can see there that's ethical is trying to find a line where there are no tumors. But like I said, at what cost is that? You literally have to try how many different geckos and hope that they don't come out with tumors until you can find one that doesn't have a tumor and then hope that that gecko's offspring won't have tumors. It's unethical in my mind to try and find a solution to a problem that is just going to grow bigger the more that you breed and spread them. Worse off, the lemon frost morph has been crossed to other problematic morphs like Enigma and white and yellow, which white and yellow has its own syndrome. If you're not familiar with white and yellow syndrome, I haven't talked about it on this channel, but I fully intend to. It's a bit more complicated than Enigma syndrome. So just bear that in mind. But there are some lines of white and yellow and all Enigmas will have issues with their own morphs and that should not be crossed to an already problematic morph then you're literally going to have animals walking around with tumors, neurological disorders, come on. At the end of the day, the morph is still really, really new. There is still so much developing and people are still breeding them, which of course I don't like, but people are still breeding them and finding out things about them. And the tumors are still developing on some geckos. I literally have Viserion who is a gecko with a tumor, a lemon frost with a tumor. They are still out there. And unfortunately it's not known their longevity because any geckos with tumors that I've seen so far have been euthanized and have been uh, analyzed scientifically to determine the type of tumors and things like that that I talked about earlier. But I haven't seen anybody else keeping a lemon frost that has a tumor. So if you are out there watching this video, you have a lemon frost, whether or not you are a breeder, or whether or not you're just keeping it as a pet and it has a tumor, can you please let me know how it's been for you? What is the longevity of a gecko that has a tumor? Do all geckos produce multiple tumors that are malignant or do some just produce a few? How long can they survive and thrive comfortably and live not suffering with those tumors? I have a lot of questions. And the part of the reason I decided to take Viserion was because I wanted to answer some of those questions through my own experience and hope that I could provide those answers to other people. Because like I said, lemon frosts are still being bred. So there are still going to be geckos with tumors. And at the end of the day, people are gonna need answers. And hopefully I can provide some of that in my experiences with Viserion. I will make a playlist on this channel about Viserion and Lemon Frost in general, because as he ages, I fully intend to get elective x-rays and other sort of testing done. I'll have to talk to my vet specifically, but I want to make sure that one, he is never hurting or uncomfortable or suffering. And two, that if he does have a tumor internally and I can't see it, I'm aware of it before it causes any sort of problems for him. So I went and grabbed Viseria and my lemon frost just for an example of what they look like. So here you can see that bright yet pale and also kind of like white coloring that they have. He's gorgeous. And here you, maybe he'll let you see his eyes. That eye trait is stunning. Focus on beautiful boy. Well, it's probably not gonna focus on him, but he's gorgeous. <laughs> Hi, bud. You wanna come down? You wanna come down? Come on. There you are. So anyways, this is Viserion. Let me see if I can get you guys a shot of his tumor. So as you can see, that white tumor right there. I'm assuming he will eventually develop one on the other side. But uh, for right now, I only see it on this side. And then for reference, come here, bud. I know we're still working on handling, but he's really kind. Uh, for reference, his pigment right there, that like cloudy pigment. Let's see if I can like show you his underside. There you go. Sorry, I just kind of like flashed you guys. That was the easiest way to show his underside. But yeah, that cloudy yellowish white pigment, that's where the tumors come from, which is why you see them right here because that's where that pigment starts on them. Yes, I know you have a tumor. Yeah, I know it stinks, huh? It stinks, huh? Have a tumor? Yeah, a cancerous tumor. Anyways, back to the video. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this informational and insightful. Please be respectful in the comments, whether you are a breeder who breeds lemon frost, whether you are a person who thinks it's okay to breed them, whether you think it's someone who's not. Everyone be respectful to each other in the comments and also respectful to me. Thank you very much. If you'd like to, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'd love to have you. Leave a comment down below, be nice, and leave a like. What else can you do? Oh, you can check the links below for a video about Assyrian as well as a social media link to Instagram and Facebook and all kinds of different social medias where you can see Viserion and his fellow gecko brothers and sisters as well as the many other animals that live here. I am losing daylight as you can see so I have to go but I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!